everyone! I am so, so excited to be collaborating with my friend Georgia Harris. She is such a breath of fresh air in the YouTube community. She has such unique content constantly. She is always coming up with the most amazing ideas and she just does the most creative, fun makeup looks that so inspire me. And I posted on Twitter that I was looking for some video ideas to do because I had a day off and I was hoping to spend a lot of time filming. And Georgia leaped on it immediately and was like, why don't we collab? And I said, yes, absolutely. Before I even knew what it was, I was in. So her idea is to talk about different categories of makeup products and what we would ideally pay for them. What sort of tier would we be on? Would we be drugstore, indie, or high-end? So for example, the first category for me would have to be eyeshadow primer. So would I be at a drugstore level, an indie level, or a high-end level? For me it's definitely high-end just because I have one holy grail eyeshadow primer, which is the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion, and that's high-end. Not to say that there aren't good versions available elsewhere, but I know that that's what works for me and that's what I'm willing to pay. I am willing to pay upwards of $30 for my eyeshadow primer if it works because I have very oily eyelids and I've tried so many different types and once I found the one thing that works for me, it's really been the thing that I've been trying to stick with. So I did write down a list of categories. I'm sure I will end up forgetting something, hopefully not, but if I do, I will answer it in the comments. So face primer, for me, it has to be high end. I love drugstore primers, I love indie primers, but I am definitely willing to pay top price. When it comes to my base products, I've definitely been willing to go up there. And some of my favorite face primers are like 40 plus Canadian dollars, so definitely in the high end bracket. For brow products, and I decided to roughly go in the order that I would apply these products, roughly. So for brow products, I tend to use three different things. Pomades, pencils, and gels. So pomade has to be high-end just because I have that one that I really like. It's like $25, $26, so that's high-end pricing. I wish I could find something that was a little bit more affordable at the drugstore or even an indie brand that would work well for me, but so far I haven't and I've kind of just been sticking with the thing that works. For eyebrow pencils, I much prefer drugstore because I find that I go through them so quickly. There's not a lot of product in there, so I much prefer to be around the $10 mark. And I find that some indie brands fit in there as well. Although I've tried a few indie brow products like stuff from ColourPop, which I find is somewhere around five, six dollars US, which ends up being around, you know, eight, nine dollars Canadian very comparable to drugstore prices, and I go through it so much faster than even drugstore stuff. So for me, I feel like something around the $10 mark tends to be the best thing. And for eyebrow gel, I really am okay with drugstore prices. I don't need the high-end brow gel. Um, I'm still figuring out stuff with my brows, but the brow gels I've been using from the drugstore, which tend to be no more than $12, have been working perfectly fine for me. For concealer, I am definitely a high-end gal all around. From the concealer I would use underneath my eyes, what I use on my eyebrows, what I use to color correct under my eyes, and different green color correctors for red spots, high-end. Definitely, I'm willing, I'm willing to fork out the big bucks for that stuff. For foundation, I am once again definitely willing to pay the high-end prices. My favorite foundations tend to be around $50. It's what works for me and it's what I like to stick with. It's not that there aren't good things at the drugstore, it's just that if I had to choose, I'd go with the 40 or 50 because I feel like they perform better. I feel like my skin looks better long term, especially paired with the other high-end base products like primer and concealer and corrector. I feel like it just gives me the best results overall, so I'm willing to pay the money for it. For face powder, I am drugstore all the way. I don't powder my face that often, but I like to have a loose translucent powder, a pressed translucent powder, and something with a, a little bit of a tint or maybe like a powder foundation, and I find that the drugstore works perfectly fine for that because I don't use it that often. It's just something that I like to have on hand, and I generally use it quite sparingly, so it's not really worth it to me to spend a whole lot of money on face powder. For highlighter, on the other hand, I have definitely shelled out a pretty penny for a pretty highlighter. I was trying to say that, I was like, I don't drugstore prices, I'll, I'd only pay about $10-$15, and I was like, let's be real, let's be real. I've 
paid like 60 plus dollars for highlighters I'd probably pay more it's one of those things that I really truly love about makeup I have something I love about every step that I do but it's one of those things where it's like if I could only pick certain things what would I do and it would be like highlighter definitely a lots of highlighter would be one of those things that I wouldn't ever give up. Have you ever taken one of those BuzzFeed quizzes that's like you have to eliminate one, which one, bronzer, highlighter, or blush? And I'm like, it's definitely not highlighter. I'm definitely not going without my highlighter because I love my glow. It's one of those things that I came around to over the last couple of years and now I just can't get enough of it and I'm definitely willing to pay pay a lot of money. I think we all wish that products were a lot cheaper than they are, but I'm just willing to pay whatever because I just love, I love highlighters so much. But I am a drugstore blush junkie. Some of my favorite blushes are from the drugstore. Physicians Formula, Milani, CoverGirl. I love those fun blushes and I feel like they perform really well and I can play with intensities like if I want something a little bit sheer, if I want something really intense, if I really want to go hard and drape my cheeks I can. I feel like I just get the most bang for my buck from the drugstore with blushes. For contour right now I have to say high-end. My favorite contour powder is a very very high-end luxury product and it just comes down to the undertones and what really works. Once you find a formula that works and a shade that works to give the most realistic like sculpting capabilities I feel like you kind of have to stick with it so I'm willing to pay more money. Same with bronzer. I do really love some drugstore bronzers but I've only recently become a bronzer convert and my favorite bronzers have been more high-end bronzers so it's telling me that I'm willing to pay the money for those products as opposed to some other categories where I'm like no sometimes it's just not worth it and I know I'm talking a lot more about high-end and drugstore products right now I don't have a whole lot of experience with indie brands but I'm trying to change that I'm trying to make more purchases from indie brands to try other things I haven't tried before like eyeshadow so eyeshadow all around drugstore indie high-end whatever I will pay the top prices I will pay a couple of dollars and I've found some great things on either end of the spectrum I just can't choose all around. Sometimes for more unique stuff you have to go the indie way because sometimes, sometimes the mainstream stuff is a little bit boring. So going the indie route means that there's a little bit more creativity and a little bit more differences there than just what's trendy right now. So for eyeshadow I will go everywhere. I have eyeshadows I use all the time that cost me two dollars on sale and I have eyeshadow palettes that were like hundred and seventy dollars so I definitely can't choose when it comes to eyeshadow. For eyeliner I tend to be a little bit more high-end somewhere around the twenty twenty five dollar price range it really varies sometimes that can be drugstore pricing here as well so it, it, it's kind of all over the place it's hard to say with eyeliner because I just don't use it that much anymore and I haven't purchased new eyeliner in a while so I, I this is a category that I can't really concretely answer. Unlike mascara, which is definitely drugstore, I don't think it's worth it to spend a lot of money on mascara unless it was like a life-changing mascara that was going to give me false lash lashes without the falsies. Um, and it just doesn't exist. I never get the same effect with just mascara than I do with false eyelashes and I don't really notice a huge difference between like a $10 mascara and a $40 mascara. I will use little samples that's probably the even better option is to trade in 100 points at Sephora for a little mascara sample or just get one for free from different sample bags. I've lived off of sample mascaras for the longest time and right now I'm pretty much just using drugstore mascaras because it's what's worth the money because I try and toss my mascara often. I don't hold myself to the three month cutoff. I usually go more like five to six months with my mascara. For false eyelashes I have to 100% say indie. I feel like a lot of the mainstream commercial false eyelashes are like prom lashes, wedding lashes. They're very safe conservative lashes. Even some of the ones you find at the drugstore they're just very safe false eyelashes. A lot of people just tend to wear them for special occasions. I wear them a lot for creating my different looks and what I'm feeling. So I like things that are maybe a little bit more wispy, things that might be a little bit more dramatic, things that are really angled on one side or things that are, you know, long on, on either end and shorter in the middle or just whatever variations. And I feel like indie brands just have done it so successfully. I have to sort of 
be careful with my purchasing lashes because I can go nuts with it and it's just it's just such a fun thing that I feel like really helps finalize a look and indie brands just are killing it. For lip liner and lipstick, drugstore and indie all the way. Some of my favorite lipsticks of all time are indie lipsticks coming in between five and six dollars US and some of my favorite lip liners I can find at the drugstore for less than ten dollars. I'm not a big lipstick person. I like lipstick, I like to use lipstick, but I much prefer the focus everywhere else. Lipstick just tends to be the final factor for me and not usually what I build a look around with the exception of this look today, funny enough, which is probably already up in case you are interested in seeing a lot of glitter. But for lip gloss, on the other hand, I am so picky, high end. I have spent almost $50 on a single lip gloss because that's how much some of them are here. And I have no regrets because it's the best formula. It gives me those glossy lips and I'm willing to pay the higher price for something that's comfortable, that gives me the, the look that I want, but I also just don't hate and want to immediately wipe off my lips, as opposed to some of the like indie drugstore lip glosses I've tried, which I just, they're too sticky, too tacky for me. So I'm willing to pay more for lip gloss, but lipstick and lip liner, I much prefer to stay at a much lower level. And the last thing I just thought of because it's sitting in front of me, setting spray, high end. My favorite setting sprays are high end. I'm willing to pay the extra money for something to lock things in place and to use different products like Fix Plus for foiling eyeshadows. I go through a lot of it, but it's because it's what works the best for me and I'm willing to pay the money. I just, they could keep raising the prices and I'd keep paying it. Sometimes I don't want to say stuff like that because I feel like then they will, but I honestly would. It's one of those staple products for me. Fix Plus, it's guaranteed in my collection. What are my like top five favorite things? If I lost everything in my collection, one of the first trips I'd be making is a trip to Mac to buy Fix Plus because I just use it every single day. Anyway, that is everything for my collab with Georgia. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I think it's interesting to reflect on this to kind of figure out, hmm, how do I actually use these products? And is the money I'm paying reflected in my usage? Because there are good products, really fantastic products at every tier, at drugstore, at indie and high end. And it's just, what's worth it? What, where's the trade off there? Because I'm not gonna spend $60 on a lipstick that I'm gonna wear you know, twice in a year. Even if it's something that I want, if it's a nice little luxury treat, it just doesn't really make sense to have it for the sake of having it if I'm not actually gonna use it, which is something I've been trying to think about more. So I've been trying to make smarter choices moving forward. And this reflection will help me a lot because I can avoid some of the higher end purchases. Not to say that I never go into another category. That's the thing, it's like, I might be willing to sp spend $100 on a highlighter. It doesn't mean that I won't also spend $10 on a highlighter. You know, if I want something that's a little bit different, I will look into more indie brands, things that are a little bit more unusual, but sometimes I'm just willing to spend more money. This is not concrete or anything. This is just about roughly where I would draw the line, something I wouldn't go above, so. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and let me know what some of your answers would be for this. Where do you draw the line? Are you a high-end eyeshadow person or a drugstore eyeshadow person? Think if money was no, was no object. I know it's hard to think that way sometimes, but really just think if you didn't actually have to focus on the price tag, you know, that my answers would still be the same here. I, even if I had a ton of money, I don't see myself shell, shelling it out for something like a mascara because it just it's not ultimately worth it when there's other things you can spend money on that are. So anyway, don't forget to check out Georgia's channel and her video if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I hope we get a chance to chat soon. Bye for now.